going to stop the music and then I will boom cut to you guys. What up, everybody? This is Afternoon Tea. It's my shit. This way is Ringe. Down there is Filipino Man. And down in that corner, this way is not Brian F. <laughs> it says Brian F. And I know you might be thinking. <laughs> Don't be fooled. That I had looks to, just I had like to Brian F. Vicious. Yeah, it looks just bit. like him. I can't tell I the move. difference. It's Brian F. down <laughs> there in the corner. Vicious. We're just going to have to keep that the whole time. But it's uh, it's vicious. Brian couldn't make it because he, uh, what's it called? He had family stuff, so he's out of town, uh, you know, in, like, another another state. He doesn't have, like, recording equipment or anything. So I was like, all right, well, he can't make it. So the, the six man has come into the lineup again right here. He beat me up and took my Chipotle money. That's a, that's a sad tale. Ooh. Brian F. Ooh, look at that beautiful that's writing. I got this shit covered. You see that? <laughs> hey, to all the Americans in the chat, by the way, happy Thanksgiving to you oh, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys yes, for being yes. here this weekend. It's probably a very, very busy weekend for each of you guys. Uh, probably visiting visiting family uh, or hosting family or just, you know, hanging out with the homies and, and eating a lot of dinner. But we do appreciate you guys this time, this Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, actually. We do have um, some... Three pretty big finals coming up. We do have Capcom Cup, Second World Tour Finals, and the uh, DBFZ World Tour Finals happening early 2020. But yeah. there's been so many events this month that kind of uh, put a lot of people in, in certain scrambles. And it's it's led up to uh, some pretty interesting positions for some of the individuals involved in uh, said tours. But to kind of kick things off, we had the North American Regional Finals happened uh two weekends ago Go over Marf. at hyperx esports arena and i'm pretty sure you guys were all watching that as well anton you were actually there trying to finish mm -hmm. your homework ringe was there <laughs> watching the stream uh, ma joss and i were uh in the uh the stink booth was what it was bro <laughs> oh do you i don't know if you guys have ever been to the esports arena in vegas but it has a condition i don't know how else to describe it but a condition at a certain <laughs> moment in the day there is a sewage issue in Ooh, the venue. Boy. If you guys have ever been there, you might know what I'm talking about. So just like halfway through the day, it will just smell like raw sewage in mm -hmm. the upper floor where the commentary desk is. So like we're in the middle of commentating, and I just turn, and I, Jeremy like hits me, and I'm just like, and I go and look at him, and he just mouths to me, and he's like, He's like, did did you did you fart? <laughs> did like, he's like trying yeah, to ask I, me in the middle of commentary. He's like, bro, like I put my microphone up because something assaulted my nose, and I was so upset that I thought it was Steve. And I was like, bro, you did not just hit me with the gross shit. So I slapped him, <laughs> and I'm like, slap me. Did you did you fart? Like I mouthed it out so like as much as I could, and he was just like, what? And I was so upset. I put the mic down. I was like, yeah, Steve, that's a great observation. I just kept going with whatever we were commentating. This place and is it was, cursed. It was awful. Cursed with stank, bro. It always smells like super bad in the middle of the day. I have no idea why that's the case. But like somebody from production was like, oh, yeah, there's like a sewage <laughs> situation. So like sometimes it ran. I'm like, you guys know about this shit and you just it's OK. Like there's just a sewage leak. It, it smells dude. like eggs. it's been like that since Capcom Cup. I'm pretty yeah. sure you experienced it during Capcom Cup as well. During Capcom Cup, Logan was like sitting there and he just goes. And he starts <laughs> looking around and I was like, bro, I, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, it's crazy. And then like I was like. Oh, like Ooh. I was like, oh, it smells so bad. And he was like, yeah. So we asked him about it and they were like, yeah, this fucking sewage situation is real bad over in uh, esports arena. I have no idea why. So if, if you ever were listening to commentary and then halfway through people stopped talking, it's probably because it smelled like mm -hmm. the underbelly of a fucking sewer. And all of us were It was like, really oh. tough. How long did it linger for, though? Like it was a solid like 10 to 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I was going to say 15 no. minutes. It stayed forever. And 15 minutes so sounds bad, about right dude. with me. That's a whole two matches. That's crazy. It was so it's very it's very assaulting to the nose and I I, I had to I had to stop. I really did. And I was like please carry me because mm -hmm. I can't keep it together. <laughs> dude, it was like crazy because the smell was so assaulting and I could tell it threw Jeremy off because he was just like in the middle of commentary just like like the way he's like, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, Mortal Kombat fatality. That was Jeremy on commentary. He's like, it was bad, dude. It was so bad. I had to like keep myself busy and like distract myself from the smell. Cause I have a very like keen sense of smell. And it sucks. Uh -huh. My man was stunned. All attacks had advantage. Bro, he was hella stunned. He was dazed. He was swaying and shit. Mortal Kombat fatality. And I was over there. Like my sense of smell is not good. So I was like. It's not so bad. And then it crept up and I was like, ooh, if I can smell that, <laughs> oh, no. if I, I like can smell that, we're in trouble. 
<laughs> this place is fucked up. I was like, that's no good. Yeah, on top of that happening over at uh, at the NARF, it wasn't too bad. I mean, we got used to it throughout the day, but uh, we do want to talk about the logistics of what went down with NARF. There mm -hmm. was a couple ple people who clunched, uh, clunched, clunched it, clinched their spots into Capcom Cup, uh, which is pretty pretty cool to see. Smug being one of them, making it back for his second year into Capcom Cup. But what I do want to talk about is what happened afterwards and yeah. during, actually. Um, so let's talk about day one. Um, there were, I think, what, like 16 setups overall? Mm -hmm. Maybe 16 to 20 setups on the side, and then you had, like, the main yeah. stage. Or whatever. Uh, one of the biggest issues that I've heard from a uh, majority of the players was that there were there was significant lag on all the setups, mm -hmm. which is a big problem. Yeah, and I think it's like, well, Anton can attest to this. He played on them. But, like, I think it's because the I don't know what monitor they were using, and I don't know what the setup was like. For those matches but you and i can speak to, about the stage setup when it comes to punk suites and everything but like what did you think playing like do you know what monitors they were anton since you played in the they tournament? were banqs they're the banq monitors banq monitors okay yeah but from what i heard like they, they were playing on skinny ps4s which already attribute to the lag especially when you have the purple characters so you know characters like fong and like minot which i oh. did have to play so once i activated v trigger and he was in v trigger like the lag was very apparent it like yeah. stopped the game I really see. like yeah and we were playing on like one of those ring stages with everything that's going on so like the lag was very obvious and from what i heard there's people that were having their capture card on the setup like capturing yeah. games so i don't know if they like set it up correctly but all, all that together made it super duper laggy and it just wasn't working out yeah and I, I had heard that people were saying it's lag, but you know how it is, right? Like, it's like an old wives' tale. Every time someone's like, oh, it's laggy, bro. Like, you never want to believe them. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm sure it was lag. Mm -hmm. Like, it's always some kind of excuse that you just accept. And so Punk, when he played against Knuckledew, Jeremy and I are commentating the finals, and he just starts complaining. And Jeremy and I both know he's complaining that it's lag. But on commentary, we're like, well, we don't know what it's going to be. Like, oh, some sh shit's going out. We filled for, like, 30 minutes in grand finals of us just being like... So, guys, you know, how would you get a big check away from this tournament through the airport? Yeah. Wouldn't that be yeah. wacky? Like, we're just talking shit because we got <laughs> nothing else to do for 30 minutes. So, um, you know, Punk was complaining about stuff. And then he tweeted after, like, fucking, like, okay, if you're going to tweet and complain about a tournament, you got to be specific. <clears throat> Punk's tweets were the worst. He was like, fucking shit venue. Fuck you, Capcom. <laughs> I hate you guys. Like, you know, it was like the stuff he was tweeting. I was like, dude, again. you got to be specific about your issues. You know what I mean? He didn't tweet. The setup was laggy because of this, this, and this. He just tweeted, I hate you guys. I'm never coming back. I was like, that's not a good tweet. You know, you got to be more specific than that. So yeah. Jeremy can attest to the fact that the console was plugged in to the internet, right? So that's one thing. It's mm -hmm. plugged into the internet for an offline event. And the second thing is it's downloading Apex Legends. Dude, that was so stupid. That happened Ugh. in the top eight of like the, uh, yeah, not the invite, but <clears throat> dude, so during the top eight you can actually see it on the top right where it actually says apex uh, apex legends is finished downloading uh -huh. and what's funny about that is before that notification happened i would go into the players lounge and i would ask them individually even the japanese players I was like hey let me know now if there's any sort of lag that you're experiencing please tell me what the issue is and i will relay the information because there's no way that these caliber of players should be dropping the things they're dropped yeah, yeah. and like the thing is right is that when so you need it to be connected to the internet when you launch it for the dlc and stuff right but it doesn't mm. need to be downloading updates you can like turn all that off it doesn't need to be updating yeah. apex legends and updating fortnite and like downloading <laughs> the call of duty like it doesn't need to be patching all these games so like mm. i was on commentary with logan and then i just see in the top left corner apex legends version 3.18 like or whatever yeah. it was like finished downloading and i just like as soon as it happened i just see logan go <laughs> Yeah, like it crushed I his was, spirit. I, I was next tell. to the, I was next to the cap cops, and yeah. they were livid, and they were like, "Get that out of there!" Like ASAP. It was it was pretty bad. They were like yelling yeah. it. They're like, "Yo, I cannot believe this is just happened." Because on Friday, we I also helped out a little bit. We stress test majority of the machines. Um, it was me and Kim one two three four. We were playing at least on like two of them, and then like during the I think what, during Fridays events on stream there was an issue where i guess it just overheated and they had to change the console entirely they never adjusted that different console i don't think that that console came from the casual setups it was just a brand new console 
that they had like an extra and nobody nobody stress tested at all so i think that was uh, that was the same one they used for the uh finals the top eight finals for both the problem is they didn't really outsource where the setups came from they just used literally they just use the ones that they loan out at the esports arena like you can play all day on that setup which, oh, which so is why like, it has Apex Legends and yeah. Fortnite and like all these other games that, you know, if you go to mm. Esports Arena, you know, they got to have a bunch of games on there, right? Like FIFA. It's just got a bunch of random stuff. That so, actually brought up other problems. So, like, because of that, they they all have the same account. It's not like when you play on Gaming Generations or, like, Capcom setups, they all have, like, separate accounts, right? Like, separate email accounts for each setup. But this one, this one was sharing the same account to every single PS4 in the. There's holy oh, shit. Ever. So like, like Infectious, <laughs> and Justin Wong were fighting, and Justin was winning. And you know, Poison has to work hard against Zeku. Like every hit, every hit counts. Yeah. And while they were playing, Justin Wong was like very ahead. Set a uh, blue screen, blue screen, blue screen comes up, and they were like, Esports Arena has logged into a different PlayStation Four. Oh no. no. Is completely. That that's just a momentum breaker, especially when you're like controlling it and like, oh, I get another chance to get all my life back. Yeah, because you just can't like, just oh, like be like, so well, sad. Justin wins. He had a life lead. Like you have to yeah. replay it. I'm pretty so, sure Infectious didn't smile about it. He no... Infectious win. No, Infectious, Infectious won, but <laughs> but but he was like, he was not happy about it, but he was not sad about it either. There was yeah. no no emotion there. Well, that's just him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that stuff sucks, but it's like if if you are a tournament organizer in fighting games, you know that these are all issues, right? You know mm -hmm. that you need a separate account for everything. You know to not have random DLC downloading and stuff. You know like all this stuff. This is these are mistakes that should not be made mm -hmm. for a tournament like this, right? That's what I'm saying, yo. Inexcusable. And, and it's the North. How many years have we been doing finals? this? It's a super premiere event, right? It's supposed to be like the toppest tier in terms of events, in points, in competition, in quality. So mistakes like these are so crucially un unfortunate when punk is on the stage and he's like man fuck you know this lag is so stupid and i hate you capcom and stuff like he didn't explain it and so people are just like wow punk's so salty but like i think he has a pretty valid complaint i would be furious 100%. if i was him if i was playing on that stage against knuckle Dew and fortnite is downloading and ape where we're dropping bro he's trying to get purple armor <laughs> like it's like, come on, what are you supposed to do if, you know, I you're a competitor? slurp juice in grand finals, dude. Yeah, especially if you're, you're Punk, who's like a very reactionary player who's built around whip punishing and stuff. And Knuckle Dude is just like, oh, I'm going to play G. This is going to be tight, right? It's just like, <laughs> oh, come on, man. The dash is amplified. Dash throw, dash command throw, 31 frames. Yeah. It's going to work on those mm -hmm. skinny PS4s. And I think this is the only premiere event that played on skinny PS4s. Yeah, they which, don't have the PS4 Pros. Yeah, the PS4 Pro is actually like... The, t the standard for premiere events and this one just wanted to play on the skinny ps don't first. worry next year ps5 will come out and i'm sure it won't take us a long time to figure that out this console has been the standard for like <clears throat> like four years now or something five years now i'm sure we'll figure it out with ps5 we're gonna need instantly. we need infill to make a document on how to actually set up a ps4 <laughs> properly please <laughs> yeah it's that very rare that a tournament much. has like people not saying that there's lag or something, right? But in this, like, sometimes I don't know. I was saying earlier, I don't always believe if it's lag or not. Like, I don't always know. But in this case, it's plugged into the internet and downloading games and shit. Like, it's probably going to be a little laggy. Or, like, usually even when, like, the pop-ups pop up, the game, like, chugs for a second, you know, when it finishes the download and starts a new one. So, like, yeah, I'm not that surprised at all that there was issues mm -hmm. on the stage with whatever console they were using. Yeah, and to add on one more point, the players are the stars of the show, right? They're the ones that are going to get larger-than-life personalities. They're the ones that are going to draw new people into watching the game, into playing the game. So I feel like they need to be nurtured in a sense, or at least provided a certain uh, level of quality when it comes to a tournament experience, especially for a super premiere, especially mm -hmm. for an event that's only going to take place a few times in the entire year. So, yeah, I think it's pretty messed up. Yeah. And on top of that, <clears throat> apparently there was an issue with... Uh some of the monitors as well uh i mean we saw not too long ago logan tweet logan saw my tweet about it let me pull that up real quick Weep. okay <laughs> stole that from sage uh <laughs> <laughs> he says so i've i've never got to like fully experience this uh i've played on like a couple of monitors myself but he says 
So now that Zowie and BenQ don't sponsor anyone anymore, are we allowed to talk about the fact that their unpowered HDMI pass-through was never acceptable for head-to-head -head setups because it introduced lag and their audio out for headphones wasn't powered either. So was low volume, question mark? I didn't even actually know about that issue. In the follow-up tweet, he talks about like something, right? He says something about like powered HDMI so, or something like that. He says that as like a standard monitor, like by itself, rather than like the stream setup, because uh, there are like certain head-to-head -head setups or whatever, mm -hmm. or actually maybe I'm mistaken, but he says as a standard monitor, they're fine. But he also says shout outs to the stream producers who would hide powered HDMI splitters under the table and fake using the HDMI pass through so we could play with a lag free head to head setup on stage. You're the real MVPs. Yeah, the thing is, I've heard conflicting, like Moss said in the chat, I've heard conflicting situations here, like whether the HDMI powered, whatever it is, causes the lag or like the pass through mm -hmm. or whatever it is. But I've heard people say that there's certain ways that so there's like two ways to do head to head setups, right? One of them I heard creates lag and the other does not. And so it's important when you're doing a head to head setup to do the one that doesn't cause any issues for the player. Because the reason we do head to head is actually, I think, not a preference for the player thing. The reason people do head to head is because it looks better on the on camera. Right. That's the reason you do head to head is because you have a shot yes. of this player. You have a shot of that <clears throat> player. You can cut between the two or you can have like a wide shot that shows both or whatever. Right. Like that's the whole reason people do head to head. It's not don't let them fool you. It's not for the player's benefit. Most of the time, most of the time, head to head just looks good. Right. So and for that reason, like it's you have to be very careful about that. And also, like most of the time when it's like a, a production company that is very familiar with the FGC, they'll do it in a way that is not going to be laggy. Right. But it's like you have mm -hmm. to have a streamer who understands which kind of setup to use for something like that because yeah i've heard that one kind of way does it the other kind of way does not do it so you have to be like you know you have to know your stuff there i'm happy that's not my job because i don't know which is better or worse or whatever i know like someone like spencer who runs the stream for Tenno would be like okay a great me, job at that. Yeah, he, yeah he's a mad i wizard. mean he has it like set in stone he's like all right option a for the single monitor and two players and option b he's got a down pat but that's the thing right you need to i feel like <clears throat> with to's on top of like having the stream setup organized uh, down to the T, they also should be setting up their PS4s correctly. Yeah, <clears throat> that's just yeah. I don't know. That's it's basic for me at least. Yes, I feel like there's there's just a lot of problems with the BenQ because I remember I actually have a picture of it. Um, they were trying to start a match and it was a match at Red Bull in um, LA. So oh, I don't know if this is gonna show up well, but like this is what happened like. You see how it's like... Oh, dude, yeah, that happens so many times. <laughs> what the like, hell? Boring matches where it, like, blurs out. And I don't know if that's, like, a power issue or if it's, like, a oh. cord issue. <clears throat> so that, that's that distracting if it happens during a match. It was not just that specific monitor. It was, like, four different monitors. What the hell? That monitor was... That's the one I beat Yipes on, by the way. Shout out to you, Yipes. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> my <God>. Wow. <laughs> so the main... <laughs> The main finals monitors uh, didn't experience that issues, but all the casual setups did. I was like, "Dude, what is this? They can't practice on." This. But yeah, that was that so was weird. it wasn't a it wasn't a BenQ monitor. You know, it, it just it monitor. just reminds me of Combo Breaker being like really worried. Like Rick's like, "Man, we're gonna have to raise ticket prices by like thirty dollars or something like that, or twenty dollars. This is so unfortunate. This sucks so bad." And I'm over here like. Man, you're one of like two people who can run a damn tournament on the planet, all right? If you can just run a tournament, I'll pay whatever the extra money is to go out to Narnia, the pheasant run, or wherever the heck it is, to go play in this event if it's yeah. going to be well run. If everywhere else in the world can't run a tournament without lag or without the head-to-head -head setup being messed up or with the monitor being broken or, you know, without sound or whatever, mm -hmm. like, the situation is, I'll just go to, like, the tournaments that, you know, actually get these things done. Willing to pay the surge prices on Ubers, dude. I'm, I'm saying a hell mary <laughs> to the GGPO gods for that one. That is, that is a rough time. Yeah, so that happened not too long ago with Narf. We said our uh, our grievances. It was a pretty cool event though, seeing all these players come out uh, and seeing the final results too. <clears throat> and you guys can check it out for yourselves at Capcom Pro Tour to see the standings. Yeah, uh, to kind of switch gears a little yeah. bit. We had the DBFC. Oh, oh Japan. wait, one second, one second, one second. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because I was the only one that watched it on stream, so That's I true. think I should probably talk about the viewer experience a little. My bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there was just, like, a few issues that I took uh, with the viewer experience. One was the audio. I thought the audio was super weird. Uh, I didn't I, get to watch it. You told me this. 
Yeah, I didn't get to watch a lot of the weekend because I was at Arc Revo Finals, but I did get to see a block with Logan and Sejam where Logan was much quieter and they had like a noise gate on the audio. So when the commentators wouldn't talk, the music would go up. And then when the commentators talk, the music would go down for the in-game sound. What? Yeah, so the in-game sound like adjusted depending on if the commentators were talking or not. And like that felt super weird. So I don't know if people also experience that, but that's something I noticed. And I just want to throw that in there as something I did not like. That is so strange. Uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly don't have no idea because I wasn't there. But I, I, a lot of people in, in the chat right now are saying the same thing, that the audio was worse than normal. Really? So, yeah, that sucks. I mean, the team that did it, it was, so it was an ESL production with the people at... Um, esports arena right so it's not the normal people that usually handle cpt premieres in north america it's not the same team so maybe the way they do audio is different or maybe they're just not familiar with most fighting games and how we balance audio on streams but yeah that sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry about that jeremy go ahead. no it's cool it's cool uh we did have like a, a reveal after with, with Narvo oh the and other and thing real quick sorry uh <clears throat> we did interviews at this event and i thought interviews were like a cool idea but not always like well implemented. <laughs> there was one time where we were sitting there and Logan and I were off camera reading the top 24 matches coming up or whatever. Oh, that's right. And as yeah. we're reading the top 24 matches, we get through all the winners matches and we go to start talking about losers matches. We're like, yeah, losers, this one is going to play and that match is going to play and this is going to play. And they go in our ear. They're like, all right, we're going to go down to James for the top 24 like uh, lineup or whatever. Right. And Logan <laughs> and I are like, huh, that's what we were just doing. But okay. So we throw down to, <clears throat> James and James is on camera holding his phone in front of him like all right th thanks guys so the first match we're gonna have in top 24 is gonna be Johnny Donuts versus Creme Brulee Steve and I'm like bro like we just we just did this right I was like what is <laughs> I was like what is the point of doing this again but it, <clears throat> it was really funny to me so I don't know I, it was cool Dude, that they at least tried interviews, but sometimes they, they did missed that, them. and they cut out all the losers matches, or majority yeah. of the losers matches, where their story actually was super important to qualify for Capcom Cup, and that actually, that actually kind of threw me for a loop because obviously we had some pretty great matches in winner's side, but there were so many more important matches on the loser side. It's like we've yeah. seen these guys time and time oh, again. We we know the caliber of gameplay we're gonna expect from the winner's side, but yo, let's see these losers matches, man. I thought that was pretty important, and it was just completely shut up and that was yeah. kind of upsetting to me I'm with those losers I'm matches were winners matches at other events anyway my like exactly. it's, not, it's not like the viewers would be bored watching infectious versus justin or like idom versus didimo cough people would not be bored watching those matches i agree and those are matches that happen you don't know why idom went one and two in that tournament all you know is that yeah. he did go one and two in that tournament yeah dang all right jeremy you can do your yeah set what's the next you sure any, any last grievances no, no one more things here Okay, cool. So we did have the DBFZ Japan saga that happened not too long ago, a couple hours ago, if you will, because it started, what, last night at 5 p.m. Uh, and then up until this morning. And I think out of all of us, Ringe is the only one that stayed awake. So I'm going to let him commandeer the setup here. Oh, all righty then. So we got Japan Saga for Dragon Ball Fighters. A lot of players were going to this because it's the final event before the Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour Finals, right? So this is your last chance to get points. And we saw a lot of stories regarding that. Uh, Tyran Damascus did a great job breaking down a lot of the scenarios that would happen going into the event. So we have the final standings now coming off of that a saga where Wawa actually took first place after losing to Kazunoko in Winners Finals 3-1. He came back. I don't remember the actual Grand Finals count, but I know he did take first place. And uh, I saw a Sage tweet that he believes the three Saga winners are the three best Dragon Ball Fighters players in the world, and that's something I agree with. Uh, Goichi, Sonic Fox, and Wawa. Uh, incredible tournament, uh, as per usual. When this game gets to the highest level, uh, the matches just always deliver. Uh, so big ups to everybody that competed in that. And I'm looking at the standings now. So the big story, I think, coming out of it if, regarding the points is that Seo and Tachikawa were both tied with 270 in that 15 position. So top 15 qualify, and then they have one more event at the finals for an LCQ for a 16-man bracket. So Seo had 270, Tachikawa had 270. So from what I gather, Tachikawa tweeted, and I mean, it's a Google Translate, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. But from what I understand, they looked to the Saga placings uh, to determine who would actually qualify between the two. And Seo got 13th at Red Bull Spain and 33rd at Red Bull Japan. 
And then uh, Tachikawa got 17th at Red Bull Spain and 33rd at Red Bull Japan. Oh. And I think the big outlier here is that Tachikawa, I checked the brackets before this. Uh, I feel like it's a mistake, but it doesn't seem to be. He went 0-2 at Evo. Uh, oh. and, yeah. And Seo was, mm. went 17th. He got 17th. So that was yeah. a, a big deciding factor. <clears throat> Someone in the chat said that it was because Seo just had more points from, uh, what's it called? Saga events. Saga events, yeah. Oh, Tachikawa didn't go to Evo because he was sick. Yeah, that's the reason that. Oh, he, okay. Yeah. So he didn't they, they didn't points, list though. him as DQ'd in the bracket. So I yeah. just assumed that he lost both of them. But that's, that's the thing. That's the thing that it that's like i don't know so this is a good example of something that came up with cpt as well is i don't know if there was rules ever stated for what happens if two players get tied at 15th uh, i don't know if that's in the actual rules because i remember cpt had the same kind of rules come up in the finals at narv where they're like okay well in the case of a tiebreaker this is how it works and those things weren't clearly written in the rules from like the beginning of the year it was kind of like what they're like okay well this is how it works now so i think like you know it's clear that they have like some kind of rules n- now, but it would be nice if those were listed at the beginning of the year. So someone like, you know, would know if there is something like that. But yeah, as far as the saga went, look, if you guys are Dragon Ball fans, you probably know, even if you're not actually, you probably know about Goichi versus Sonic Fox as being a very fun rivalry, a very interesting rivalry to watch. But I would encourage you to go back and watch at least like the top three of the last two saga events as well, because even without Goichi or Sonic being like the star of the show, in particular in this last one, neither of them entered. They are mm-hmm. both so good. Both the tournaments are super, super fun to watch. Wawa is a treat to watch. I think he's one of those players that just makes the game look so fun. Dude, the emergence of Wawa is definitely the story of 2019 for me in Dragon Ball Fighters because obviously, like, it's just such a good, like, spice to throw into the pot that was already brewing, right? Because you mm-hmm. have Goichi just unstoppable right running through tournament after tournament after tournament and then you got this guy wawa emerging who gives him a run for his money at one of the the big events in europe and then sonic <laughs> winning the spain saga over goichi making the god bleed finally and then wawa securing that last that saga so event, <laughs> i think was just like a it's a perfect storm coming into the finals like i'm yeah. so glad wawa won and like the three best players being from three separate regions the us eu and the japan like it's all so good Mm-hmm. I yeah, think the, the event itself was pretty well run, honestly. They had so yeah. much international presence over at the Japan Saga. Uh, the commentators killed it as well, hearing uh, Majin Obama as well as uh, the other two. I was like, Damascus was there as well. Damascus and, and Tyrant. Uh, and yeah, Damascus Tyrant and Giuna killing it. Dude, the, the entire event, I thought, was, it was so pleasing for viewers. I yeah. agree, because usually J- Japanese events are not a pleasure to watch on stream yeah. like we, we stay on nico nico quality and even this one even if they had a few blips where they had to show like the monitor instead of the big screen like even that the, the match continued and i feel this is a big step up for japan and i'm happy mm-hmm. for Dragon ball z having the hypest event shout out to right. super we got that yeah that was really exciting i think too and uh what's it called the cool thing for me is like like ringe mentioned that it's interesting to see the three champions from three different regions but it's also cool that there is uh what's it called if you look at the the leaderboards the amount of players from asia and the amount of players from the west qualifying is actually split pretty well it's like a nice breakdown Mm -hmm. between the two so there's two europeans and like five americans i think that qualified and then there's Mm -hmm. like seven japanese players and then the singaporean player in seo who qualified over tachikawa so it's as we've seen from the beginning of the game it's been very cool actually that (laughs) there has been a lot of uh, what's it called spread out between different regions in the beginning it was like usa japan was the rivalry last year and then now it's become like europe has shanks wawa and uh, kane obi assassin like tons of other players that are really really good in europe that are competing in that level so it's like really fun to watch all of them compete and see the different styles from different regions and different characters like wawa plays a weird team for uh what's it called you know dragon ball is a strange team compared to most other people so he's really fun to watch i think that's another reason why people really like watching sage too right sage feels like he's playing a different game yeah like my man yeah. is super slow he just waits you out grinds you out annoys you to the point where you just super dash in. he two ages you just sits on the other side of the screen and throws brawly projectiles it's uh yeah it's really fun to watch the distinct styles that the players have come up with so somebody on the chat asked about the standing so i'm gonna pull them up really quick actually for those of you guys who are curious so i'll show the standings on 
the stream here. Whoop. So this is the final standings for Dragon Ball. You can find this on dbfzworldtour.com slash standings. And mm -hmm. this is where everything ended up. So it's top one through 15 is the cutoff here. Seo we mentioned was tied with Tachikawa. So this is the end of the standings here. And uh, what's it called? If you look up the blue uh, kind of background here where it shows like the special uh, logo, this is people who won the Saga events. So Goichi, um, Sonic Fox, and Wawa are the three Saga winners. And it's all updated. So 1 through 15 will be qualified for the finals. As we mentioned, that last spot will be um, LCQ. So if you are interested, or you're like a Tekken fan or whatever, Tekken is very similar. It's 19, <coughs> and then the 20th spot is the LCQ. It's the same kind of thing for this. And it's the same thing for Street Fighter as well, right? They have 31 players, LCQ. It's the same kind of plan yeah. for the finals. I do have a question about that, though. Um, I know that... Like different tours do it differently. Like Tekken does the group stages where two people get out of the groups. How is mm -hmm. um, DBFC going to do it? How does first seed have to play the LCQ winner? I'm is... actually really curious about that because the way CPT does it is first seed plays 19th or, or no, sorry. Um, LCQ first seed plays, plays last seed. Yeah. But LCQ the LCQ winner, winner is automatically plays the 14th seed. Yeah, so that's what it is, 14th. So the, the way they do it in Street Fighter is that the LCQ does not play first seed anymore because of the year where Nemo won and then smoked Punk round one. And everybody <laughs> was like, oh, no. So I don't actually know. I could probably look in the rules and see uh, whatever. It says LCQ is seated 16th in DBFC. So oh. that means that, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, Goichi, no time to prepare. It's, yeah. it's actually a very dangerous seed. I think, to be seed. fair, Goichi has the best <laughs> chance to be anybody that shows up anyway. That's like the most solid, like a rock kind of yeah. like just wall to be put up against first. It's pretty crazy. Oh, I forgot I got to write the whiteboard. Let me put up this picture while I redo it. It is wild, though, that he might have to play someone like Dogra first round, right? Like his Cyclops Osaka crewmate just because Dogra mm -hmm. might take that LCQ. Tachikawa oh. might win. Like these people, these players are not slouching players. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's not a doubt. Yeah, it's just hard either way, right? I feel like yeah. if he plays anybody, like, you're right in the fact that he gets preparation time at least. But yeah, I mean, he's such a solid defensive rock. And like, his strategy going in just beats like everybody, right? Like, just because of how solid the fundamentally he is. So he, mm -hmm. he should be all right, even with the okay. LCQ winner being very good, I'm sure. You know when you go to like write a sign and you start with really big letters and then by the time you make it to the edge of the sign, you realize you have no space left, so you have to write really <laughs> tiny letters. Is that you on the whiteboard? Yeah. I got you. you. Know, I don't, I'm excited I don't know. that we, we're talking about this now, but when we do our like our future stream after the DBFC finals and we see someone upset Goichi first round, like I just can't wait till that happens. I, You're... I, yeah, <laughs> it could, it could definitely ball, happen. Honestly. I just think that of all the, like, he he has such a good chance to be like super stable <laughs> compared to almost everybody else. Like I feel like whoever it is would have a better chance against like Sonic or like Fenrich or Wawa than yeah probably Goichi. But it depends on the matchup. It depends on who qualifies, right? Mm. I like the attempt, by the way. Thanks. I just saw it because <laughs> people were saying it in the chat. I'm just like, I got to see it now. It's distracting. I'm an expert at writing with my mouse, actually. <laughs> I do it every day. Yeah, you definitely do. You have to be a big um, S because you only write big S's, right? Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> he's he's definitely used to the letter S for sure. Yeah, but, apparently uh, the someone in the chat also mentioned that Dragon Ball always had a tiebreaker rule. That's cool. I know that CPT, whatever tiebreaker situation came up, they did not have a rule for it. So they just had to like make it up. But that's cool that it was in the, the rules already. It's the same thing as like Tekken, for instance. I was, um, you got people got to use these websites more. They're fantastic. For Tekken, mm -hmm. I went to look at how the group stage worked, right? Because I was curious about how the group stage seating worked. Because last year, the way it worked was like different a little bit than the way it works now with how the seeds get placed or whatever. So I went to look and see how it worked. And it says in the rules. So like you know the top player the top four seeds or whatever top three seeds and the lcq are randomly placed in pool a b c and d and then after that uh it goes in descending order or whatever starting with jdcr they get to place themselves where they want that's the way it like works out all the way down to 19 and it just says clearly in the rules like how it works how the group stage format finals works like everything is very clear in there so it, again if you don't know the reason we're talking about all these tours is that 
they're all coming up soon. It's like the end, right? So if you mm -hmm. go to TekkenWorldTour.com, CapcomProTour.com, or DBFZ World Standings, you can just go find all the information you want about who's qualified, when the finals is, where to watch, what the rules are. It's They're all really useful. They all have a little rules section and just control F to like finals and it'll have the yeah. breakdown of how it works. Which we'll actually have, I think, next week. The earliest finals we have is the Tekken World Tour finals happening on the 7th and 8th. And then they're going to have their LCQ for their 20th player. As you mentioned, the top 19 are being uh, put to the test here. I put the standings up for the link for the guys in the chat. Um, we also had some... We had one last master event with Dreamhack Atlanta, which Anakin took down. Uh, a good amount of players went there too. Uh, Shadow 20 z But we didn't get to see all of it. But there was some drama behind... Um, some of the Tekken news, if I'm not mistaken. I think Steve actually had the info on that. Yeah, so I was just showing off the TWT website. 19th is the cutoff, so Saint was the last one to make it in. Uh, for everybody curious, if you want to look at home. Again, th these websites are great. If you want any of the, the news or information, you just go to the rules. You can click on that, the standings. There's even a little finals tab now you can click on for Tekken that says <laughs> where it's going to be, how it works, the last chance qualifier, info, schedule, who's qualified, and all that kind of stuff. So... These websites are very useful. If you haven't, no, whoops. What happened? <laughs> I clicked <laughs> on the wrong it. scene. Uh, if you haven't already looked at them, then yeah, like they're great. These websites are super good. So I definitely recommend uh, checking them out if you haven't already. Uh, as far as, um, what was I was gonna say? As far as the tech and drama, this is the most interesting portion to me about what's been happening. So as you guys know, uh, there's been some interesting information where Ni nee has gone out to Pakistan to mm -hmm. train for the finals. You know what I mean? So in this like training for the finals or whatever, he's gone out there and done that. Instead of during the same time period, there's two events in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? That uh, were coming up that uh, were on television that apparently they... Um, Ni nee was like, I'm not even going to go to. I'm not even going to play. I'm, I'm just going to go to Pakistan to train. So mm. he just skipped out on uh, these events to go there. And while he's there, uh, he has been playing against everybody. His first day sets, he played like 145 matches. He's like 14 and one in his overall record against Pakistan players and stuff. And he was like, okay, well, you know, he's trying to play everybody. And one of the matches that was, or two of the matches people were excited for was Nee versus Atif and a wise honey, mm -hmm. who are two of the players besides Arsenal that have been traveling for, uh, what's it called, for Pakistan. And the owner of Genuine Gaming, who sponsors both of those players, was like, no, uh, I am not interested in having this match go down. I don't want you guys to play him before the finals. Don't Damn. do it. Like, hold, don't do it. Don't don't play. Like, we'll hold out. Wait for the final. Save it. Like, don't make that match happen. So I there's they don't a lot do of people who are really upset about that. that. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Like, nobody... Nobody really does that anymore, I feel like, in yeah. this era at least. And it still happens in Tekken. That's pretty beast. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like, if you really think about it, Ni nee went all the way out to Pakistan to play these guys and stuff. And I'll be honest, if I was them, especially people who are, like, in the tournament in the finals, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to play against them either, right? Like, you have the advantage of being the player who is beating Ni, nee, which is, like, humongous, <laughs> right? And you, that he wants you to play against him so he can train. On one hand, it's like, okay, well, if you play against them, you're going to get better and stuff. Like, them playing knee is like, okay, he's a world-class mm -hmm. player. He's worth playing. I'm sure they respect him. On the other hand, if he figures you out before finals and then you, Pakistan, have been dominating all year and knee shows up and he just starts destroying you guys for the world finals, it's like, oh, shit. Like, That's the thing, yourself, right? man. Yeah. That's the thing is I think after the finals, they'll pay him in first to death, right? They'll play him in first to 2000. They don't care. But <laughs> right before the finals, there's no events before that. This is the only time we're going to get to play. Saving it, bro. I'm already beating you. There's no reason for me to play you before that. Yeah. I really, really want to know. Sorry, go ahead, Anton. I was going to say, I just really appreciate that they're actually thinking about going to Pakistan to scrim. And I mean, like fighting oh, games don't yeah, really have yeah, the yeah. scrimming at all. Yeah. So like for them to go out and go to practice, like that, that like makes everyone better. That makes Pakistan better. That makes me better. And I understand saving it for nationals, especially now that the Tekken World Tour is now at two hundred thousand. It's not a measly nine thousand dollars anymore. It no. is two hundred thousand dollars. And me is a time. contender to win. Arslan Ash is a contender to win. Or Honey is a contender to win. All of them need to save their stuff. And you're right, Ringe. After they're going to play the first two thousand, but right now 
it's all about that money. And I agree yeah. with that. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it as went a, up by like another player, fifty thousand or something like that. So it's at two hundred fifty k or whatever, which is huge. Ooh. It's it now matches the CPT prize pool, which is like a two hundred fifty k flat, and then it has the whatever comes in from the CPT revenue as well mm. on the um the I forget what it's called the po- crowdfunding. So, yeah, it's a big chunk of change thanks to, I believe, Astro was the main sponsor putting in a lot of that money, which is really cool. So nice. the TWT Finals has a lot of money on the line. And, look, a $250,000 purse for winning that event is humongous, right? Like, it is huge. If I was me, I'd go to Pakistan, too, instead of being on TV because you win $250,000, like, that goes a long, <laughs> long, long way. And something like, well, it's like, yeah, first place is probably 150 or something or 70 or whatever the split is, right? But that money goes a long way. And the other thing is being the world champion is, like, a big deal. It's like winning Evo, right? The prestige of winning an event like that is not just the money, but the media presence that comes with it, like, television opportunities. People come to you and they want to talk to you interview you Mm -hmm. they want to shoot documentaries like you you gain a huge following people are interested like there's a lot that comes with winning an event like that it's such a big deal and me was like i want to win finals like i want to win i don't care about tv that's something i love about me he's always looked at the bigger picture right he's the guy that was grinding out every single character so he can have counter picks not just sticking to one and it's like shown that he's had that mentality about every single thing when approaching tekken and it's super sick. He's going to Pakistan. He's not taking these paydays on TV in Korea. He just wants to get as good as possible. Yeah, it's not just it's not just about gaining the small Twitter cloud. It's the big cloud and the big picture. Yeah. Not even and the so, cloud, but just the prestige of being a champion in a game that you love and put so much effort into after all these years. Like we have so many more newcomers, like a huge emergence of players uh these last couple of years, right? And he still wants to be on top. He's like, I'm ready for any of these newcomers. I don't give a damn. I put too much time and effort in this game to be one up by anybody else and i'll prove it to you guys here i think having that status is way more than any any amount of club yeah, yeah i think it's really cool i'm like a big fan of it i'm glad tekken has become so undeniable in gaining new players even though it is a four-year-old game yeah. like yeah. people are still getting in people are actually breaking their way in people have been playing for a year getting to that level and then practicing practicing i'm glad that it's showing how fighting games have evolved throughout the years even though it's been pretty much the most legacy game out of all the games out there right now yeah, and that's what's interesting too is like Tekken has just continued to grow that viewership and um, new players and stuff, and people are more and more interested in it. So I'm really excited mm-hmm. for that. Gee, who the hell dropped a million bits? In yeah, we gotta we rolling? gotta give a shout out to I Will Rider for ten thousand bits. That's a full tub of ice cream for Steve. Yeah, hey. I'll use it tomorrow. And all of us, yeah, <laughs> doing, ice cream party. I'm doing a potluck, so I'll use it to buy <laughs> buy ice cream and uh, snacks for everybody. Uh, nice so work. Thanks. For Jeremy in particular, <laughs> Jeremy, you know, I forgot that his name's not on the overlay. Well, it is now, actually. It's written in beautiful writing. So uh, what's it called? Gorgeous. I will um, I'll handle it. Thanks, man. Um, as far as uh, not playing the other players, I don't blame the owner at all. I heard that he <laughs> said something along the lines of, like, I will do it if the fans really want it. And, like, he kind of feels the pressure to do it. But on the other hand... I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I'd be like, look, man, there's a lot of money on the line. They're trying to trying to like win the finals. I don't feel like it's like a big problem to be like, nah, I don't think we should play, you know? Yeah, I think from a viewer perspective, it does suck, right? Objectively, you're not getting the best <laughs> player versus the best player. Like just straight up. But like if you're a person that has a chance to really these players that you're managing really do have a really good chance of winning the entire world finals. You got to make that decision. What's best for them in the long term, not just right. for the viewer right. right now. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to just like make the decision that's like, oh, this stream, people really want to see it. <laughs> and then at finals, you lose, you know, the difference between first and second is like 30 or 40 grand or something. And you lose 30 or 40 grand because the, t- the viewers were like, hey, man, why won't you play knee, bro? It's like, oh, man, yeah. like, what are you even going to do in that case? You know, so. I think you have to do you have to sort of do what's right for you as the player in that situation. Mm-hmm. You can definitely see both sides of the argument, and everybody yeah. has their own like opinions on it. But uh, they got to do what they got to do as pro players, man. Like knees side, totally understandable. Uh, Oise and Oise honey, and just them trying to save it for nationals, it's totally understandable as well. Yeah, especially with their if they're under an organization or a team. Yeah, you, you know the Tekken much, Goombas are, though. The Tekken Goombas are like, where are blah, blah, I can't believe <laughs> you. Where's Christy and where's a wise honey? You know what I mean? They're like, Christy. They're like, 
<laughs> they're like, where's Christy? Jeez. Where's the lies, honey? Where's Melina? It's like, oh, God, no. Oh. I can't wait to see them play, though. Like, once once it happens, it's going to happen, what, in, like, seven days, dude? It's coming up so quickly. It's next weekend, the first weekend of December. I hope you guys tune into TWT Finals. It's going to be sick. I'm really excited yeah. for it. Um, that With that, do they have DLC coming out after that? Yeah, yeah Leroy Jenkins, anything, bro. Right? Or Leroy no, they had the Smith. the features and stuff. <laughs> oh, Leroy Smith, my bad. Yeah, yeah they had all the features Leroy. and Leroy and stuff. Tekken has always done the playable now thing. They've been like a big fan yeah. of that. So that's my imagination that that's what's going to happen. Uh, I did see tweets, though, where people were begging for Chrissy. Of course, the Chrissy sounds came out of the woodworks. And yeah. someone was like, I can't wait to see their faces when Michael Murray and um, Harada release someone else or like announce someone else and then michael murray oh, yeah. of course has to reply saying that don't worry i got you yeah so i didn't see that <laughs> you know how it is man it's always like there's always some kind of situation like that michael murray has moved into the position that harada <laughs> used to be and i feel like he has abandoned the motto of that position the old model was don't ask me for shit but michael murray is like in fact do ask me for shit and i will get mad on twitter and reply and stuff he's taking the wrong stance he's really got to beat these goombas down i think that he needs to go back to don't ask me for shit because as soon as you start to give in a little bit an inch it becomes a mile and then take now a these mile, motherfuckers dude. are asking for christy dude harada worked so hard to establish that as a position dude. Don't ask me for shit. How are you going to do? Michael Murray is like a bartender. He's like polishing a glass. He's like, oh, what would you like? You want some Christy? You want some Leroy? Oh, <laughs> Frank I got gotcha. I'm like, no. Don't do I don't know if you guys saw the Harada tweet this week. I don't know if it was this week or last week where somebody was like replying to him in Japanese. He's like, yo, shut up and say it in English. That shit was so <laughs> it was good. It was sit down and shut up. And Harada was, so was like, good. look, was bitch, you don't speak speech. Japanese. He still has the don't pip use it. strong. He said, yeah. he said um, uh, something along the lines of, like, uh, don't use this robot Japanese on me, right? Like, because it's Google Translate. Like, don't use this robot yeah. Japanese on me, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty It was pretty awful. But he still, he still has that position. He's like, don't ask me for shit. Talk to me like a normal human being. Don't fake it. Yeah, that's <laughs> the stance that the, you should have. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you start to engage in a way that's, please ask me for stuff, it's no good. That's when it's bad. It's like you got these robots on the internet yelling at you and stuff, and you're like, oh, man. Oh, somebody actually, Junko actually pulled out the tweet. I told oh. you to communicate in English or shut your mouth and sit the hell down. Shut your mouth and sit the hell down. The thing is, is Bro. that like it's like Eris' stream, right, where like oh, he beats his viewers down and they love it. And that's what Harada has created. The don't ask me for shit thing is like, the the viewers know like I we can't ask him <laughs> like if I ask him he's gonna yell at me so they can't right when they do Harada flames you and he and everybody loves it so that's why you, they need to stick to that so that way when people get out there and they're like I can't believe blah blah this this and that you're not like well you bring up a valid point you know maybe I should add Christy and Leroy and all this you're just like yeah. no shut up don't speak to me in this broken Google Translate English it's pretty awful. <laughs> I'd be how, sick of that Ares DLC. Ares DLC in Tekken would be hilarious. I just want his laugh to be like the round announcer. <laughs> like every time the round. <laughs> he, every intro, you can't skip the intro. He just walks in, he's just looking around, <laughs> and then <laughs> it's a little chuckle he fights. When you That's lose, it's Tekken like the Ares Rage videos from Tekken Tag 2. It's like, don't you ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for an Aries just costume. His his shorts, his black shirt, and his the black the dickies, the, the dickies, black yeah. the dickies shorts, yeah. <laughs> the black. The he owns. I bet you when he opens his wardrobe, that's all it is. There's like a hanger and like it's like the double loaded. It's like black t-shirt, black dickies, black mm -hmm. socks, black shoes. And he's got the black hat as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I guess what's left there to talk about? We have a, a ton of DLC coming our way. Uh, for not only Tekken, but we also have Champion Edition releasing. The right. pre-release, actually, the pre-purchase is available now, if I'm not mistaken, which includes all the costumes that Filipino Man has already bought individually for Chun-Li. Uh, rip your wallet. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. But, okay, so you can pre-purchase it. Uh, yeah. It is available for free in February. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people that. realize that, actually. When I was looking at the new version, a lot of people were like, wow, you have to pay 30 bucks for like this new version or whatever. The update and everything, if you don't want the characters or anything, is free, 
right? That's mm-hmm. like the way that it works. It's the same kind of thing that Unis is doing with Uniclear. It's like a free balance and like version update, but if you pay for it, you get like the if you pay for the version or whatever, you get the um, characters and, and all the other stages. stuff that people want. It's basically season yeah. five, except they have this option where you finally can get everything and catch up for 30 bucks or 25 yeah. bucks or yeah. whatever. So I put the link up for what you actually get in the entire package. So you get like the stages, you get a handful of costumes, but not quite all of them. And there's specifics as to which ones you don't get uh in that in that article. But I can't see why people would complain about that. It's like 95% of costumes. Do you know if the Olympic costumes are in it? Oh, that's a good question. They're probably not because it funds the Olympic prize pool, oh, right? Mm-hmm. So like, anything that funds a prize pool would not be part yeah. of the champion yeah, edition. It's, it's anything that was like limited to like a certain crowdfunding or something, which is like the CPT stuff and whatever, right? So I don't know about the Olympic outfits. I don't know what the deal is for those. But for me, I saw this update and I was like rubbing my hands. I was like, oh, yeah, because I've never bought any stages. <laughs> I have all the default stages on my console. I've Same. never bought any outfits. The only time I ever bought an outfit was someone on my stream chat donated $5, Pocky Giant, <laughs> and said, please buy Nostalgia Akuma because I think that, uh, yeah. what's it called? N- Nostalgia Akuma looks cool, so I bought it. That's the only costume I, mm. I have. I don't have any stages. I don't have any costumes. I got nothing. So I saw this update, and I was like, patiently waiting in the woods. I knew all along. <laughs> All these years ago, I was planning. Dude, I'm going to have to put on my tinfoil hat for that one. Oh, <laughs> man. He's actually got the tinfoil. So, He's Anton. Ready. Okay. You, you're you famous for buying a couple of costumes. Listen. <laughs> How many versions of the game have you bought in all the costumes for? How many? For, for Chun-Li and Minot? Yeah. Just two. At least so two. Like, what know, about, like, other costumes and stages and stuff? Oh, God. I tried my best to keep up with every character in my PlayStation 4 version for everyone else. So like, I've spent about like $1,500 on this freaking game. And now they're all for 25 bucks. Are you serious? Because oh, you bought it no. for multiple versions? No, just for the oh, PS4 no. version. So like, I caught, I like, I like up for like, just to, just to like have, when people come over and play, they, they want to have their costumes. And I also like originally oh. in season one, like, I did the glitch too, so I can have all the colors that were like from like one through fifteen for every character. So like, I definitely, well, I you definitely know, have people's interests in mind when I buy these characters. I didn't realize then, that Filipino man had literally pays for the continued <sighs> development of Street Fighter Five. Listen, the Chun Li players are the reason why the game kept going. Like, they would have moved on to the next game if it wasn't for you. I'm 100% certain that Street Fighter VI would be out if you weren't, if you didn't exist. He's carrying Street Fighter V is what it is. On your back. You got this shit He's strapped carrying. to your back and you're trudging through the muck. Oh, People are saying well, you're the problem, but you bought all these outfits for everybody. Like, you don't have to buy all these outfits. Most people buy the outfits for one character and it costs them... 20 bucks in their life right you bought the outfits for every character (laughs) just because people need their costumes so that when you beat so when you beat them there's no excuse right that makes sense that's what i'm saying is like when i play um like if i don't have my b-girl costume to j-lo costume with the tan (laughs) i'm definitely not going to win like and then people hate that costume but it's definitely one of those things that like it helps it really does help well, the chat said the Olympic costumes are free at least, so you don't have there to. There you go, Anton. <laughs> Let's They're go. Free. All right. Let's go. The- Let's Tony go, hasn't Anton. gotten a costume since the Morgan costume. They already milked me for all my money. Damn. <laughs> it's because you, so, so you we, bought the Chunli and, Chun-Li and, and Minot outfits for two, like multiple accounts or multiple versions? What do you mean for multiple versions? Like PS4 and PC or something? Yeah, I have PS4 and I have PC, so I have I have them for both. What about costumes no. on other accounts? No, because on PC, um, seamless oh, right. give it to all of them. That's, That's how right. it works. Oh, Whew. smart. Yeah, smart. I was concerned there. So you haven't bought them from multiple PS4 accounts. No. Okay, smart. All right, that's not so bad. Jeez. Save all right, I, I, this is this is hurting my wallet just hearing it. Is there any DLC coming up for Dragon Ball? Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, uh, Broly yeah. is releasing December fifth. Oh, okay. Broly. Yeah, yeah, they showed off some new stuff for him during the saga, which was really cool. 
Uh, I saw people like talking about it, tweeting about it. They should like, you know, they did the arcs, this 30 second trailer thing, like two weeks ago or whatever on the last saga mm-hmm. where Brawly comes out. He's like, ah, ha, ha, and then it's like over. Like that's the whole trailer. <laughs> oh, they show like show. medium, medium age, super level three. It's over. I saw the level three where he just goes like crazy and the entire screen is like greenish, right? You know how it is. They don't show the assist. They don't show the 2L. They don't show anything. It's an yeah, auto combo, like an H, uh, you know, a special <laughs> move, and then super, super, and that's it. That's all you Jeez. get. Come on, man. I, the new trailer is a little bit more traditional. Like, if you think about most trailers for most characters or, or games and stuff, they show you a lot more than what the Arxis trailers are. But they, they definitely show a bit more in this new trailer. I think, finally, they were like, you know, people have been complaining for, like, four different <laughs> versions and four different games now that our trailers are too short. So, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, maybe we should think about this or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I also, yeah, yeah, somebody in the chat brought up that there's, like, leaked footage or leaked, uh, you know, stuff about Dragon Ball Super Brawly or anything. I haven't heard anything about the new version of him or anything like that. I don't know anything about that. I didn't see anything like that. I just know that there's a trailer. I don't know any of the new stuff. Yeah, I haven't delved into the leaked gameplay stuff so far. We shall see when it comes to Brawly. But then we got Gil as well, right? Not just uh, the costumes and the stages Ooh, for champions. yeah. Yeah, that's Gil cool. looks hot. That character looks sick. His super is incredibly cool looking. And Seraphine he's voiced Wayne, in English yeah. by Liam O'Brien, the legend. And um, in general, I thought he looked really interesting. And not only is Gil a character they showed off, but they showed that there was new V skills. And not new V reversals, I'm sorry. Okay, when the, the fucking trailer happened, they showed like the spinny circle and it was like V skills, yep. V system, V whatever. And I thought it said V reversal. So I was like, was, yeah. wow, is there new V reversals as well? I said that on commentary because I've never seen this trailer. I watched it for the first time like everybody else. And as soon as I said that on the <laughs> internet, I saw people like there's second V reversals for every character and everything. And Look I rewatched the trailer, done. there wasn't. So then mm. obviously, like everybody's like, there's a second V reversal. And everybody's like, no, there's not. And they're like, wow, Capcom, you lied. And I was like, oh God, I gotta just pre- get out what of here. I'm just gonna pretend like I never said anything. I thought they copped out a lot on Gil though, because the super cool seraphic wing was really, really cool. But I really don't think they should have went with the white um ending. I think if they did fire and ice and just had that super with fire, ice, and lightning, that would have been so much more sick. But I love the effect on like the angel wings floating into the background. I think it just <clears throat> looks so cool. I agree that fire and ice is his thing, but that yeah. super looks so cool. I think in 3S, it was sort of like a weird screen. It wasn't white, but then also like rainbows, like circular rainbows would come out of his body yeah. as he hits you. Yeah. And I'm actually kind of curious to see if, well, what happens if you block it? Does the actual projectile still come out and and chip you for that much damage? Because it in 3S, be even crazy. even like the playable version of Gil, like when you had like the PS2 version and you actually like unlocked them, you can do a uh, traffic wing. And even if they block, they still take like a ton of damage, like 200, 300 damage. Gil is like an old man I character. Not. I have no idea what he does. Yeah. So uh, yeah. he's not a charge character, by the way. Yeah, I know that. I'm, I'm calling say- it right now for those that are still in disbelief. He's not a charge character. But I was they actually did a reveal on uh Capcom TV on YouTube. They were going through the character. Uh they were talking about his retribution mechanic where if you hit uh, both sides of Gil in a certain combo, you get certain effects, right? It's either like more stun, uh like a wall bounce, a knockback. It depends on what side you hit him. But there's like two effects for each side, if I'm not mistaken. It's the were, side you mean fire and ice. So if you hit like a fire <laughs> move and then you hit an ice move, he gets a retribution, which does something mm-hmm. special, right? That's like the depends on what you hit him with last, I guess. Yeah. So if you hit ice into fire, it does one thing. If you hit fire into ice, it does another thing, right? So it's just two different mm-hmm. effects. So the fire effect is like the burn effect on the V trigger from Dalsum or something like that. And the ice effect is like Colleen's ice effect that freezes your stun bar or whatever. Those are the two things that it does. So he he looks really cool to me. I think that idea is really like fun, right? It's like a very fun character design to have that kind of mechanic in in, uh, design like this. And that's the kind of stuff that I wish they did a little bit more of, right? Of just making this really interesting retribution mechanic for Gila. Uh, to me the the idea about it sounds really cool i don't know how it'll work in practice but it's interesting to me i'm just so happy he doesn't have like an ex headbutt like <laughs> i'm just over it what's your fucking he problem did, I, there Anton? have you ever seen wait 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 did he not do a headbutt in the trailer because i really can't remember no he, he didn't, didn't he, he didn't okay no head so that that kind of uh 
brings me to my next point about the two characters with uh, Urien and Gil. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, Urien's going to be obsolete. A lot of the older players are saying that. I'm like, no, I don't think that's the case at all because Gil's moves are going to be significantly different. The only thing he'll have will probably be the fireball. Certain normals will overlap. Uh, I don't know if he has a knee drop. He's got the tackle. I think he has drop. the tackle and knee drop. Okay. it's gonna. Uh, I feel like you could treat it kind of like Ryu and Ken. Yeah, someone yeah. said they had they had a three frame too. They did like the frame breakdown of like the trailer. <clears throat> so there's a three frame, but there's no there's no uppercut. This guy say jam. He's like, you're right. Urian is obsolete. Three, three frame, frame? <laughs> by default. Oh, you don't realize that having a four frame button in Street Fighter Five is like being in jail. <laughs> like there's nowhere to run. You're just in a small <laughs> white room. There's nowhere to go. Like you just there's a toilet and there's a bed and that's all you got. You're and part you of just... the problem with characters like Gene Urian get buffed. A three frame yeah, character, a four frame like character. You don't realize how difficult you know it is to live in this kind of environment. <laughs> I do like. I do think that they did say there's going to be 40 characters too in the next version. So there will be one more character uh, announced by February. Yeah. So who do you think it's going to be? Well, everybody keeps saying that the, the leak reveal is that it's going to be Seth or whatever, right? Mm. Which uh, Seth sucks, man. I I don't want <laughs> Seth to come back. Nobody remembers fondly Seth I... besides Seth players, right? Tell me, anybody remember Seth and be like, I can't wait for me to get hit by a cross-up jump heavy kick for f a billion stun into SPD, into whatever. Like, Ugh. Seth in that game was such a nasty character, and it was made for nasty humans. <laughs> See, but, like, the thing is, like, from what, what I've heard mean? from the, like, from the aliens that have spoken to me is that very reliable aliens, it's going to be a female Seth. Like, it is Seth. But it's going to be a set like so it's not going to be like another Urian clone. It's going to be a female Seth with female characters moves. Well, that'd be sick. That's no, even that'd be worse. Dangerous. All the female characters have these. <laughs> no, that, I just realized. I just realized what I said. Steal. I don't good. want this at you know, all, man. Karen's what are normal you talking Laura's about? command grabs. Jury's whatever. Oh no! I don't want a female Chun -Li's Seth air legs? Oh, boy. at all. That would all the problem is all the females have all these cheap moves. They've always got cheap moves. She's gonna have Armika season one air legs, Armika ex That's shooting what I'm peach, saying. Monot oh, orb. You know, like all these crazy oh, moves. Damn. It's in her stomach. She just jumpy ex kunai Stand from fierce. Ibuki. No, absolutely not. I'm doing a hail mary to the GGPO gods and hoping <laughs> this character does not make it in. Give make you picked the wrong gods, dude. <laughs> give me something else, like uh, I don't know anything else. It's either make a character that's really cool or someone that I don't like that sucks. That one of the two, and I'll be perfectly <laughs> acceptably happy. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do, especially because of the Olympics. Like, they, is this all, is this the last character for Street Fighter Five? Are they get? They said they have a special announcement in line for the Capcom Cup in two weeks. Like, what is that oh. special announcement? On top of that, even if they say it is Seth, right, and she's completely busted, they're not looking to patch any sort of like exploits out for the year 2020 in yeah. line with the Olympics because they want to make sure the gameplay is, is remains exactly the same for everybody practicing, which right. can be very, very dangerous, by the way. That was confirmed in, a, in an interview with Ono. I mean, remember uh, what happened with Tekken? Month. They were like, all right, here's our September patch. We're dropping it. This is the patch you'll play finals on. And then two weeks later, people were asking Michael Murray for shit because he's polishing that glass you know instead of just leaving <laughs> and they were like well hold up akuma turned out to be a little powerful maybe we should do some teeny little adjustments there for akuma or whatever right and that's the same kind of thing that happened with dragon ball where they dropped the patch and they're like this is the patch you're playing on for this season of dbfz we'll add in dlc characters but this is the version and <clears throat> that version was the version where people were like gt goku oh my god so like you know as a developer, when I think it's good to drop a patch and be like, this is the patch from here to here. There'll be no changes, mm -hmm. right? Unless like there's bugs or whatever, you know what I mean? They'll fix that. But no balance changes in this time frame. I think that's a good idea to allow people to sit there and really delve into the the game and figure out what these characters do and figure out this version. But you just mm -hmm. have to be a little careful about like, you know, you don't release a patch where, you know, for some reason X or Y characters are just absurd and you're like, damn it, what are we mm -hmm. going to do? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean the the main characters of focus would definitely be just like Seth and Gil if you know it comes true. So it'd be Gil and whoever the fortieth character is. Uh, actually, I'm I'm kind of 
I'm kind of down for that. Just to have them completely broken. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> I <laughs> just, don't want just break every character, Seth. make it a Marvel yeah, game. Yeah, make them make them all mad good. Whatever. I don't want it to be Seth. I don't want it to be Sethorella. I hope it's like uh, uh, Oro or you know uh, Abel Eagle. Why not Eagle? You know Eagle's cool. Eagle. What? He hasn't been in a game in forever. I know. They, they also asked for Sodom because they have all the other Final Fight characters. Times are a change and it's time for Eagle. Yeah. That's a gentleman. I think both character. of those characters would fit pretty well. They can't use their weapons, though. I honestly thought you were asking for a KI crossover when you said Eagle. My bad. The jump and <laughs> arrow. That's who, Eagles, or that's did you look them up? That's on me. Look them up. Tell me Eagles that's are really cool. <laughs> Eagle from uh, Street Fighter 1 made an appearance in CVS. Two. Oh, oh this guy looks tight. He is yeah, but he's he got the double Dude, Eskrima, the, ooh, little ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, Yo, he's so cool, but and he fight his sweep. Know, man. He's got a cool scar. Oh, his yeah. double, his like, yeah, the sweep. You guys in the chat room, Google Eagle CVS and go look it up. That character is really tight. Mm -hmm. I really like this tinfoil hat, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so mad you, you came prepared. We were in this call for like 15 minutes before the show even started, and I never saw this. I had no idea <laughs> that this tinfoil hat was waiting off to the side. I should have came with some props. I missed. I, I I needed some what's I called. I needed some protection from all these haters. I see. Jeez. Hey, yeah, real I mean, quick. You I don't know some, how much your wallet needed have. protection, bro. I'm worried <laughs> for you. It's too late. It's too late for that. The damage is already done. Um, Dang. do we have? time for predictions of who you guys think is going to take it i want to ask um Rinch for his thoughts for dbfz who he thinks is going to win dbfz uh, Steve, tekken street fighter the triple threats Let's do it. i was going to say i was going to do one after one by one i'll say anton gets street fighter uh steve you get tekken and Rinch gets dbfz what about you you wiener i'll get street fighter because that's all i got <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's all I got. Do what do you mean? What do I mean? It's early. No, we all so. gotta pick everyone, bro. How about I we think just do all early, three? Like, so all I think we should ready. all do all three. Just yeah. who, maybe who we want to win. It doesn't have to be an educated opinion. It's just who we okay, want cool. to win each game. Thank God, because I have no education. But hey, do you want to do that now or after you run an ad? Uh, no, we'll do it now. I'll run one at <laughs> <All> the <right>. end. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it. I was about to say. I was like, I don't know how. Uh, it's a podcast. How we just do the work. podcast. It's fine. All right. So, anyways, uh, let's go with Ringe first. Let's do Me. Street Fighter Five. Let's go with Tekken. Jeremy first. Actually, I think Jeremy okay. should start. All right. Well, I'll do it in order. So Tekken is coming up first. Um, to win it all, that'd be pretty cool to see Arslan Ash do it because mm. of how how much of a fan I became after watching his Tekken run at uh, at Evo. Um, so I personally would like him to win because his story is just is phenomenal and the things he's been doing for the Pakistan community. Um, for Street Fighter Five, Smug. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why not? That would be tight. Why not though? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tight. Smug man. is Smug is great. Smug's the homie. I'm glad he made it in. Um, I would like to see Big Bird take it. Um, mm. also for the same thing, really. He's been leveling up his Zeku and his Bashid year after year. He had a really, really solid run in <clears throat> in 2018, and then seeing that performance between him and Bonchan, as well as just him taking down. What was it? EGX. Uh, it's maybe kind of a big fan. So I like Big Bird for Street Fighter Five. As for man for DBFZ, Kazunoko's my guy. Kazunoko's my guy, dude. Kazunoko always with, has back to back would be something else for sure. Yeah. I young love players. that's my guy, dude. He's my he's been my senpai since Street Fighter Four. You so. young players, man. Yep, we stick together, <laughs> baby. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Who's next? Uh, I can go next, actually. All right, who do you want um, to win? So for Tekken 7, I like the Arslan Ash story, but I like one story even better, and that's my man Nee snapping everybody out of the business. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. I want Nee to take the whole thing. Like I said before, he's been looking at the big picture this whole time. I want to see a payoff with the biggest Tekken tournament to date, and I want to see him win it. So I got Nee for that. Uh, for Street Fighter, so I got some exclusive info for Street Fighter. All right, I'm a, Ooh. Uh, I, I, you know, Punk, don't be mad that I'm dropping this exclusive info, but I got to drop it. All right, so well, Punk's plan for 2020 is to become a restreamer and commentator, much like you know, Sage Am or some of the popular personalities you're familiar with when it comes to Street Fighter 5. But to do it, he has to win Capcom Cup, and I think this is the year he does it. So I got Punk for Street Fighter 5. He's not going to do it unless he wins Capcom Cup. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. oh yeah. I hope he wins. There's that. And then for Dragon Ball Fighters, man, 
it's so hard because I think Sonic is super focused and locked in on Dragon Ball right now. I don't think he's too concerned with MK, and that's kind of where he gets a weakness when he's focusing on other games. Then Goichi, of course, has just been looking so dom- dominant throughout the year. I think before Spain Saga, I would have said Goichi. But, man, I think the kid might do it, man. I think Wawa might do it. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to go with Wawa. Okay. Those are my picks. So I'm going to go next. But it's going to be boring because... Are you going to keep your hat on, too? Of course, of course, Hell of course, yeah. of course. It's because this Filipino oh. man already has all the answers. So he's like, well, I fuck it. <laughs> So for Dragon Ball Z, I think Wawa's going to win. I think Europe needs to win one of the three events, and I think the event that they're going to win is Dragon Ball Z. I think Goichi and Sonic Fox have played out their saga, and this is going to be Wawa's turn. So Wawa they can also has line. home field advantage because it's in France. Yes. It's in France, yeah. Wawa is just I, like I watched him play last night. It was very exciting. I think he's gonna he's it's very unorthodox, but it's still part of the style. So I think Wawa is going to win Dragon Ball Z. For Tekken, <laughs> I think Ni's going to win. Nii is I'm actually a big Nii fanboy. I think Nii is like the best fighting game player like ever. Like, like it's just I think he's that good. I think he has mastery of every character. I think he's gonna learn something for Akuma. He's not gonna lose to no Akuma BS from the Pakistani players. He's not gonna lose to anyone else in the top set, like top 19. I think Nii is going to win Tekken. Mm-hmm. And then for Street Fighter, I think Punk is gonna win. So <laughs> so that's all like, my like, picks. No, like that, that's my picks. Like, like I think Karen is way better than every other character in Street Fighter Five. Free, like I don't think Rashid touches her. I don't think Akuma touches her. I think the the simplicity of her gameplay, like people think that they have all these tools, but the way she, she plays really behooves her in a first to three, in in the format of Capcom Cup. I think Punk wants to win this. I think Punk has the correct path. I think he's going. He has the thirty second seed in Minot. He's going to beat the Minot. And then he's going to beat Machibo because that is a bad matchup for Nikali. I think he just has the path to do it. And I think this is going to be Karen's year. So that's my picks. Dang. I I like those the same picks. Well, for Tekken 7, obviously I'm going to go with the person who has been training the hardest, who looks the most focused, and that's JDCR. Uh, He came to my house and he was hanging out with my dogs and eating a lot. And so I think that he is prepared both mentally and physically for the TWT finals. Uh, And I can tell you his cooking skills, much like his Tekken skills, have improved lately (laughs) on player one and player two side. He can stir with both hands. So I'm going to go with JDCR as a TWT champion. But But he's not a fan of Roscoe's. Uh, no, but he is a fan of Shake Shack, which was just opened in Long Beach. And given that he's a fan of Shake Shack, it just opened, or you know, I feel like the two or the correlation is there. So he'll probably be okay. This he thinks Shake Shack is in and out. He doesn't even know the difference. Well, he likes both, actually. He's like, he's a fan of both. So no problem. We got them both. I, boom, <laughs> JDCR. <laughs> hey, these are our personal picks, all right? I'm just giving you the facts about what's going to go down. He's had a good year. <laughs> yeah no yeah he's been playing pretty well he also stopped playing armor king thank fucking christ <laughs> his character's whack bro stop playing armor like he is super cool i love armor king but it's too much work right you're trying to win the championship don't play armor king just play dragon of like play some any other character really right like any of his other characters is fine don't play armor king mm-hmm. um <clears throat> for street fighter i actually think that it's gonna be i think punk will be in the finals but i don't think he's gonna win oh. i think knuckle dude is gonna repeat and actually be a two-time capcom cup champion the daddy uh, I power think, up Ooh. i think he has like the similar power up to the year that he won so i think Ooh, knuckle dude yeah. will beat punk and become the capcom cup champion for this year Mm-hmm. I think he has a good chance. He's been playing pretty pretty hot lately, so we'll see how he does at the finals. And then for mm-hmm. Dragon Ball, um, I don't think Goichi Sonic is over with. I think that's such a fun match to happen, and I think that'll probably happen there, although maybe not even in winner's finals or something. I think that some pr- crazy uh, upset or something could happen. I think Sonic will win the finals for Dragon Ball. Ooh. That is my prediction about how sonic's playing and stuff last year before the dragon ball finals i don't think sonic was as focused they were kind of like oh whatever and played mad lazy actually i think sonic played so lazy during that finals like not how they're supposed to play so i'm very excited to see this year's dragon ball finals and uh yeah i think sonic will probably probably win i think sonic's gonna win that and mk actually of course you pick three americans 
Well, when, when Sonic's locked in, they're on a different level, bro. I did pick three Americans, <laughs> shit. JDCR is from New York. He I counts. forgot. It's LA. Somebody said LACR. That's correct. Yeah. LACR. Yeah. LACR, NYCR, whatever. Either way, I forgot about that. RG Man says Sajam with the worst picks. I remember I was watching something on stream release <clears throat> or recently, and there was like some match. And I remember talking about it was a Red Bull, and I remember saying something along the lines of, you know, if Dual Kevin plays Samurai, I think Dual Kevin actually doesn't have a horrible chance of winning. I think Samurai is the favorite 60-40, but that's not so bad. And someone was like, mm-hmm. Samurai will destroy Dual Kevin. Stupid no. streamer, bad opinion. And then obviously <laughs> Dual Kevin wins. And that person's nowhere to be found. It's really easy to type in the chat room and stuff like that, all right? And make fun of our for fun picks without ever looking <laughs> at a bracket. <laughs> I think Steven is the best picker, or picker is probably not the good word, but like he pick, he has the best choices once we get to top eight. Yeah. Because he correctly predicted the bracket of season one. Like, like the last two years, Ricky I was not the Ricky meta was win. having a good year, but she, she was not having a great year like everyone else, but she was having a great tournament. And you predicted her over like Kazunoko and um, Haitani at that point, mm-hmm. and all those players. And then you predicted Knuckle Dew, and I didn't even think Knuckle Dew was doing that well until the end. Mm-hmm. So, like, you like saying this history of Knuckle Dew actually having the year that he had at the end. He's Remember, definitely, it's definitely. I woke up at Evo morning and I was like, I looked at the bracket, I was like, Bonchan's winning Evo. Yeah. Right? I was like, it's over. Bonchan's yes. winning Evo. Yeah. Amstradamus. If I see the top eight, it's, like, it's usually I have a predict. It's the same thing that the year Mena won. The year Mena yep, won, yeah, I looked that's at what the I was bracket, say. and Live I was like, this is a Mena bracket. It was definitely a Mena bracket. Like, the Zangief, like, I didn't know that Zangief lost that bad to Birdie. I thought it was a 5-5 match. I thought, like, of course, at that point in the game, I was like, all Zangief needs to do is get in once, and Birdie yeah. can't get out. Yeah. But apparently there was so much more to that, and you were right. Yeah, so we'll see. But, but, that being said... I've not looked at the the final bracket at all. So my <laughs> prediction, all these predictions are just for fun, right? So when I actually look at the bracket, we'll see how it goes. I'll do like a breakdown on my stream. And we were talking about whether we should do another show with all of us before the finals or after. It's most likely going to be after, I think, that we'll probably yes. do another one to sit down and talk about all the finals and everything. Uh, there could be like a midweek one or something if we plan one. I'm not sure. But we wanted to do this. You know, we do it monthly. We picked November 30th. We're cutting it close, all right? We, we <laughs> cut it very close to get a monthly show done in We November. had no weekends to do it, man. It was like back-to-back weekends of work for everybody. Yeah, we've all been pretty busy, I feel like, with everything that we're we're doing. But I feel like in December, it's not so bad, right? None of us here are going to TWT Finals. So we're all chilling, nope. watching TWT no. Finals. Nope. <clears throat> And then um, Capcom Cup, I think all of us will probably be around and, you know, whatever. It's in L.A., so it's like, yeah, we'll probably all be yeah. around. And then after that, I mean, not, nothing really happening until, like, Evo Japan, which is only a month after that. <laughs> so it's going to cover out pretty quick anyway, I guess. But, yeah, we're, uh, we're almost there. Oh, yeah, that reminds me in the chat right now, AJ's posting the bracket. There is a challenge bracket for Capcom Cup that you can do and put your predictions in if you guys want to do that. I always do one of those on screen, and I always do a chat bracket as well where I let the chat room vote on who they think is going to win. Last year, they voted that the finals was LCQ versus Daigo Umahara. So, LCQ? You know, yeah, LCQ versus Daigo was their grand finals. Years, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, Hell LCQ yeah. versus Hold Daigo on. was the chat's finals. That was really good. I don't even remember who they thought was going to win the LCQ, to be honest with you. I don't Who won like... the LCQ last year? Oh, ZJZ. ZJZ. Yeah, I feel ZJZ like this ZJZ year's won. LCQ is much more fierce. Like, Oh, for sure. It's so crazy. You have every Urian player known to man to land, mind you. And then you have like Itabashi there to... <laughs> don't give me that look. Haitani as well. Haitani didn't make it, so he's definitely going to try to qualify. Oh, boy. But, that... but I feel oh. bad, actually, because there's a lot of Daigo fanboys in these streams and in Twitter. Like, he has the worst path possible. Like... He has to beat Problem X first round to make it through, and then Problem. Bit, and then he has to probably beat Momochi to get through. Like that is very hard, especially with the year that Daigo. Also, back. last year Daigo went zero and two at Capcom Cup. <laughs> he, he didn't sleep. He couldn't fall asleep all night. I know that oh, feeling. I forgot sucks. about that. I was yeah. gonna laugh, but then I, when it comes to sleeping issues, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that, dude. Imagine like you're Daigo and you have to play like this the biggest tournament of the year, right? Like, all right, Capcom Cup's coming up. You fly in and you literally can't sleep. You lie in bed and you can't sleep all night. You just go that show sucks. up to the tournament, zero sleep, play punk first round and go 0 and 2. Or punk first round losers, actually, maybe is what it was. 
Mm-hmm. I don't remember who he lost to in winners, but that sucks. Like, that's why a lot of players fly out like a day or two early to try to fix their sleep schedules. And it's like an 8 a.m. call time or something or 7 a.m. call time for the players. So you have to wake up early anyway. Yikes. I didn't know about yeah. that. Oh, I think uh, <clears throat> so. It's like Friday is the LCQ. Saturday is when the top 32 starts. Mm-hmm. And then that evening is like SFL. It's going to be like the US versus Japan exhibition or like that. grand yeah. finals. Yeah. I totally forgot about that as well. I heard there's going to be twists, but I'm not sure. If you heard about it, it's probably true because I don't, I don't even know anything about it. <laughs> nah, I totally I forgot either. when it was actually starting and that I was actually doing it. I was like, oh, shoot. I forgot this is happening on Saturday. Yeah, I forgot But that kind of like that. throws me off. Like, I mean, we have some of the players in both the top 32 and SFL. Like, I hope, you know, there's at least time for them to rest. Yeah, I always forget about that. It's like, I always forget that the tournament is like they're the SFL tournament is going to happen first on Saturday or during Saturday sometime during the LC or the uh, top 32. I'm surprised it's not like after the LCQ or during the LCQ before the top mm-hmm. eight or something. It seems to me like it would make sense to do the SFL portion while the pools for LCQ are happening, then do like mm-hmm. LCQ top eight on Same. Or something. That's how I would schedule it. But obviously I'm not a, I don't, that's not my job. So I don't know if that's a good or bad idea, but that's mm-hmm. like what I would imagine the play would be. Uh, so yeah, it's Saturday and then Sunday's top eight. It's only top eight. I think that's right. So, yeah. That's so it's what, that's like back to back weekends of finals again. Next week is TWT finals. The week after that is Capcom cup. Then we're pretty much big chill and we're enjoying all our DLC up until DBFZ World Tour Finals happening in 2020. Yeah. Right? I don't even yeah. think there's a... Did they announce the date yet? I don't think so, right? For the finals? I don't believe so, no. Yeah, because unless they announced it last night, they hadn't announced it before then. So uh, last year it was in January, like the middle of January or something like that in LA. This year, obviously, mm-hmm. it's in... Uh, what's it called? Um, France. France, which is going to be oh, really yeah. sick. I can't wait for that. Like France should be incredible. I'm really excited actually to uh, see that. The other thing is that uh, yeah, someone brings up Red Bull Kumite is coming up. It's the weekend after Capcom Cup or the weekend, two weekends after something like that. Oh, it's like right snap. before Christmas. Right. So yeah, it's the weekend after. So it's like Red Bull Kumite, and then in January and February it's like Frosty Faustings and Evo Japan. So yeah. like the, the next three events that are a ways off. Yeah, and then. Uh, the finals or whatever for Dragon yeah, Ball. Dragon Ball. So, and like Damn. KIT as well is probably around in that time. So yeah, fighting games still have a lot of stuff coming up. That's and why I'm more... actually happier that the fi- the tours start in like April and May now because like yeah. they yeah. cannot start in March. It's too fast, you know? Yeah. And you got it actually makes me sad February. though because now that we got DreamHack Anaheim in February, that's going to be nothing again. It's just going to be another tournament for SoCal instead of another CPT event for SoCal. Yeah, we another... don't really have any tournaments on the West Coast yeah. right now. That's fair. We really don't, actually, yeah. But I agree that it should start in April and not, like, so early. I feel yeah, we yeah. need to get used to the patch before we give so many points away. California not having any tour events cracks me up, actually. When we had, like, a Tekken <laughs> event this year, that was uh, not, like, a master or anything, right? Which NCR is, was a ranking event this year? Or no, it was a. There was premiere. no SCR. No, NCR. Oh, NCR. NCR was premiere, and then I don't think it was on the TWT. Yeah, it wasn't on Dragon Ball either. Dragon Ball hadn't started up yet. Yeah, so mm-hmm. Electric Cancel was like the only tour event that we had. I didn't it, know. It'd be like that. It do. All right, everybody. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it for our topics, right? Yeah. I believe yeah. so. All yeah, right, so. We do our social media shout outs for yeah who wants to start ringe sure you can find me on twitter.com slash ringe with an underscore i know they're doing the twitter thing at the end of the year where they're deleting names but that guy i'm pretty sure still running his account so i don't know (laughs) we'll hope the best cross our fingers i do want to acknowledge i messed up sonic's pronouns earlier too my bad on that one and uh yeah that's all it's hard to remember yeah um you can follow me at filipino man just spelled as you would spell it, not ph, f, f, please, f, and f in, follow- the chat. f in the chat. You can follow my Twitter on Filipino Man with a zero, and or my, my Twitch, not my Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you can follow me for all of my amazing opinions. You guys will always have a blast listening to my Twitter. Uh, as for me, I'm a vicious FGC, not Brian F. It's uh, V I C I O U S F G C on twitch twitter instagram i'm posting a lot of mostly uh behind the scenes stuff for, at events um and pretty much anything that's going around the fgc uh newsline 
Yeah, uh, you can find me at SageM on Twitch, which is what you're watching now. Twitter, same thing. Uh, YouTube, you can type in SageM and it'll probably show up. But the YouTube is Superman SageM. And if you hit exclamation point uh, cast in the chat, you'll see everybody's Twitters and stuff. And then you can go there to uh, find everybody else's stuff. So thanks, everybody, for coming through. Thanks to the Twitch overlords for front paging our little uh, preview uh, thing I couldn't get it done actually I emailed Twitch they couldn't make it happen Majas from Guatemala was like yo I got a homie at Twitch Guatemala I could get you and yummy stew on the front page so thank you to Majas Lord uh, yes. bless his soul for helping us get on the front page and the Twitch cops for letting that happen in Guatemala you guys are fantastic <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so thanks everybody who helped make that happen and uh, thanks everybody for coming through as always I will run us a quick ad we're gonna head out of here and then I'll send you guys on your way I think NEC is happening so I'll probably send everybody on over to uh, yeah. NEC so thanks for watching everybody thanks for uh, being here everybody and we'll do another podcast next month probably after all the finals are over for everything <laughs> um, so yeah check out those finals if you haven't already the Tekken Street Fighter finals are in the next two weeks back to back so tune into those and check them out you guys have a little, uh, lovely one hopefully your holidays are good hopefully you're feeling okay from thanksgiving we'll catch you guys around peace out everybody see ya